Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,995 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Well, welcome back, friends. Um, know that in the world, a lot of crazy stuff's going on, but I know that here in Florida, um, some of the beaches are starting to be opened back up, so that's uh, good news. And just wanted to, um, you know, send a message to all you guys that are playing service now out there, how important your jobs are, and you know, you should you should really be proud of yourselves that you're in the technology sector implementing this wonderful platform. So today, what we're going to talk about is three useful user interface actions or UI actions more commonly referred to as um, that will be um, really useful for you and I think will be awesome to have in your arsenal and I've used these in the past with um, with different customers and uh, you know fulfilling their requirements and so forth so when you think of a user interface action um, for those of you who don't know what a UI action is it's basically I want you to think of two words or two terms um, one is button and the other is on demand so usually on your screen you'll see like a button and I'll show you in just a second the three that we're about to talk about today so the first one is copy record the second one is the copy or excuse me create a child task and the third one is to create a user. Um, the third one, it could also be an assignment group um, in addition to a user um, or maybe another record in the system that is not related to either um, the current table or uh, the child task. So let's take a look at um, this table right here. It's called Aspen Record Producers. You're probably familiar with it if you've watched some of my previous videos. Um, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the form and we'll see here um, that I already have the create user see this button right here this is the what was it the third one yeah the third one that I referred to um, and I'm gonna show you the other two and then um, first I'm gonna show you how they work and then we're gonna go and take a look at um, you know how to set these up so I'm just gonna fill in the mandatory field here um, found myself and I'm going to put in a couple other things like the short description with my initials and then I'll just put in JM1 for the description here and I'll give it a request urgency of this and I'm just going to hit save right now so the first one that I'm going to demonstrate is uh, this one called Aspen copy which is essentially our copy request I just named it Aspen copy I want to put my own personal branding on it. So what this is going to do is going to copy the record. So we'll see here 1087 is our current record. So when I hit Aspen copy, and we'll notice that it didn't come up in the in the new screen, correct? So if I go to a new one, the only one we're going to see up here is create user. And I'll get to like how we set that up. Um, one is for on insert and then the others uh, will be for update so this is what we consider the update after the record has been created or inserted into the table so at this point I'm going to click on Aspen copy and it should copy over a couple things like our requester our urgency short description and description um, so I'll go ahead and hit I think I did location too so let me just add my location here I'm just gonna save it one more time. <clears throat> now I'll click Aspen Copy. And now we're gonna see here, look, a new record is opened. We have our number here that has changed to 1089. And let's see here, it looks like the, the requester came through, the location came through, urgency, short description, description, just like we wanted. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. So that demonstrates the first one. So if we want to take a look at the nuts and bolts behind it, um, we'll take a look at copy record. Um, and we'll go here to um, our UI action. So to create a UI action, we're going to go to the sys UI action table. To get there, we would type in sys UI action. And then you could do dot list to bring it up in a new tab or a new window. Um, excuse me in a new tab not a new window 
and then we'll see here the name is aspen copy and that's what's going to go on your button label right um see how show insert is not checked but show update is that's why on the update um it was displaying and not on the original and then i made it a form button i also made a form link so you have a couple of options here as to where you want to put it also one thing i wanted to note is like if you're doing agent workspace and you're banging your head against the wall as to why it's not showing you have to go down here to this um, section called workspace and you have to add them that way it's also another section here that requires roles so if you want to make it only for admins um maybe itil admins whatever um, this is where you would go ahead and do that and then um here's a script right so we're going to notice here our current our condition is open by has to equal the user so i'll show you i'll prove it to you just like in a second that only that specific user can see it regardless on of whether i'm an admin or not so that's what we're saying here like you have to be the person to open this record to make a copy of it so let's break this down we declared a variable of copy one we're saying glide record on the Aspen RP table, which is the same table, right? So if we take a look here, Aspen RP, we find it right here in the URL. Uh, that's our that's our table name. Um, and then I'm just telling it, look, set the value of requester to requester, right? And we'll notice here the sys ID. Remember I talked about this in previous videos that. Um, if you're having trouble with reference fields, always go your go-to play is to do dot sys ID to make that populate. Because if you don't have dot sys ID, it's not going to populate. So then we have here the other ones. So location I also did dot sys ID, and then the other ones like urgency, which is um, a string with choices, and then these other two, which are strings. I just did current dot and then their field name, right? So pretty straightforward. And then we'll notice why does it open a new window right here? It sees action dot open glide record, and then we refer to copy one, which is our variable up here. So that's what makes that happen. Um, I looked at some of the other UI actions that are out of the box, and they're just really complicated. I think this is a much simpler method for creating a UI action because all the other ones that I found out the out of the box were they always inevitably they always refer to like some script includes or there's some you know long if statement you know that's convoluted and and confusing I think this is just way simpler um, of, a, of a method to use or a script to use to implement this so um, you know you feel free feel free to use it um, that's what this channel is there for right um, so let's go back here and let's prove it that um, I can't open one that was done by another user, right? Or open by another user. So we'll find here one was opened by Bill Gates. Looks like for COVID-19. <clears throat> and then we'll see here, Aspen Copy is not there. So um, it looks like that condition is filtering this out. So that's great. Now we'll talk about the second one, which is copy or we're gonna create a child task, right? So I'm gonna go back to the one that I just created, which is 1089, and now I'm gonna uh, click on create child task. All right, and we'll see here, it runs this little message, almost looks like a business rule, it says Aspen task, blah, 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 has been created. Now, what's happening here? Here's our number. And by the way, with these numbers, you should probably never leave them like open like this. <laughs> Um, you should probably have a UI policy or some sort of data policy that covers these up or makes them read only. So for our parent record, it inserted um, the number here, right? Isn't that great? So if we want to refer back to it, we could. We know like where where this is coming from, right? Or how this was created. Um, and look, it gave us it automatically populated the assignment group. So let's go and break this one down. This is our create child task. And the reason I created these tabs is also like if you need to come back to the video, um, you can see where I'm clicking and then just fast forward there. So that way you don't have to waste your time. So again, we'll see here show update, um, name of this create child task, um, table name. Remember the table name is where it's coming from, right? That's where we want the button to be, even though we're creating this on a different table. So what do we have here? We have a variable of ASP. Uh, ASP and then the glide record is going to the task table right 
And then we're saying ASP, meaning this table, short description. We want the short description to be the same as current. Current refers to this table right here, right? Dot short description. And then I put in some other stuff like parent is current dot sys ID, meaning put in that parent field, the sys ID of this record right here, the table. And then um, we have our assignment group. It's always setting it to ASP. And now I put in the sys ID of that assignment group and we saw that it worked perfectly there. And then we're saying, okay, variable sys ID ASP insert, right? So insert the record and then the parent equals sys ID um, for the parent uh, field, right? So if you wanna also put in um, the, the parent fields, um, that way we can do that too. Um, and then here's where that info message is coming from, right? ASP and task, ASP that number has been created and then we're redirecting it to where? redirecting it to that that task that we just opened up um and then we're, we're setting the return url right current okay cool so now we got all that out of the way um and we saw and again just as a reminder for the workspace if you're going to put on agent workspace you know you have to do it down here and then requires roles um you know right there all right so then we'll take a look at our third one what was our third one here oh yeah that's right create the um, the user. So basically, there are times when, you know, you might have uh, someone ask you, hey, you know what I need is the ability to create a user from a record. Like if I can't find them right here in the requester, um, I need to be able to create one. Um, so here's what I want you, you know, like here's what I want you to do. I want you to create me a button where I can just create the user. And you'll see here, create user. Um, is here on insert, right? So um, let's say I couldn't find the requester. I created a UI policy to basically hide the requester and like create a new one now. So I'll put in a, a user ID, right? So if I wanna um, add here the, the user ID to, um, that'll go into the user table, I can go ahead and do that right now. So let's say I wanna put in, um, oh, I don't know who's a person that I'd wanna put in there. Let's just put in here, uh, Steve. Uh, I don't know, let's go with Balmer. No, let's go with Jobs. Yeah, let's go with Steve Jobs. Um, I'm gonna do, sorry, I meant to do Steve.Jobs. And then here I'm gonna do Steve. And then I'm gonna do Jobs is the last name. And then I'm gonna do Steve.Jobs at APL.com. Great. And now what I'm going to do is now I could save this, but what I'm going to do now is create user. All right. So it runs the business rule um, telling me that congrats, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to have an account for Steve Jobs and create a message also right here. And also it takes me to the record. So right now we'll see that we're looking at the sys user table. And also one thing I did was I wanted to track these things. So I created this created from field. So that way I know that this came from an Aspen RP or record producer record. Um, so that way I know that. So that way I can track it that way too. And if I wanted to go back to that record, I always could, you know, I could do that um, if I wanted to later on to kind of trace this. So let's take a look and break this down. So here's our create user. Um, UI action right here. We'll see here show insert was checked, which means that when I go to a new record, the create user will display. And again, the other show update is there too. So later on, it'll be there. Um, and we'll notice like on the last side, I didn't have any conditions there. I kind of just put the conditions in the comments. So that way, in case I want to pop it in there later on, I could. So what are we doing? We created the variable or declared the variable ASP. We have our sys user record. Then we're going to do, um, you know, dot first name equals current dot first name because here, this is coming off of which table? This is coming off of the Aspen RP table. So we have the same thing with the last name. And that's why you have this U underscore here is because that's a custom field. Whereas on the user table itself, um, these are all out of the box. So we have email to U email, um, et cetera, and on down the line. 
Um, and then here we have our variable sysid asp.insert. And then here's where that info message came from. And this is kind of just like the last one, right? Have the info message that pops up at the top and it redirects us um, to that, uh, um, that record. And then one other thing was that um, this created from, notice, current, that's this ID, right? So current being you Aspen RP dot sys id so those are the three ui actions that uh just reviewed um and again i've used these in the past um and i, th I think they're they're really handy so if you ever want to refer to this video and if you learned something today um just go ahead and click like my name is jason miller founder of aspen now solutions and we've just unlocked the power of service now